This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Despite being the central focus of Europe at the moment, and despite officially applying for union membership, Ukraine isn't a member of the EU right now. There's no doubt that many within the country would like the support and stability that the EU provides. But thus far, membership, at least in the short term, looks unlikely. So let's explain the process of EU membership and why Ukraine joining the bloc doesn't look like it's going to be happening anytime soon. Now, it's worth saying that despite the war, Ukraine is not starting from zero when it comes to EU membership. Ukraine has already been associated with the European Union through an association agreement since 2014, which includes a deep and comprehensive trade agreement which came into force in 2017. Now, this was part of the EU's Eastern Partnership Programme, which is way too complex to get into right now. But if you want to know more, then you can check out our video, which is linked in the description. That all being said, until Russia invaded Ukraine, EU membership looked off the cards for the foreseeable future, possibly forever. Sure, Ukraine was making some progress, but they're still some way off meeting the EU's criteria for membership. However, the war has changed things dramatically, as just five days after Russia invaded, President Zelensky applied to join the EU immediately. Okay, so with the war continuing, you might suspect that Ukraine will be joining the EU very soon, right? Well, not exactly. This latest decision to apply for membership was the easy part. Before they actually become members, Ukraine needs to prove that they can meet what's called the Copenhagen criteria. These criteria consist of the following. Political criteria, which includes EU values, sound institutions, and robust checks and balances. Economic criteria, which means having a functioning and resilient market economy. And administrative and institutional criteria, the capability to implement and absorb EU law. And this is where things might take quite a long time. But you might still be wondering why Ukraine can't just be fast-tracked into the EU for special circumstances. Well, there's two reasons. Firstly, this would be seen as quite unfair by other prospective EU candidate countries, including Georgia, Moldova and the Balkans. They would all also argue that EU membership would help them cement peace and security in their neighbourhoods, and that they should be taken in urgently too. Secondly, the EU relies on a common rulebook. If countries can't or won't play by the rules, the system will inevitably break down. Taking in a country before it can meet those demands means fundamentally undermining the foundations of the EU system. Therefore, there's no such thing as a fast-track mechanism for EU candidate status. So, if there's no fast-track, then just how close is Ukraine to achieving the criteria? Well, let's go through them, starting with political. And the problem for Ukraine here is that many political analysts consider Ukraine to be a weak democracy. For instance, in the Rule of Law Index, which measures judicial quality, it ranks 74th just above Burkina Faso. In the Press Freedom Index, it ranks 106th. And in the Human Freedom Index, it ranks 98th, practically on par with Kazakhstan. In order to join the EU, Ukraine would need a fundamental reform of its political and judicial institutions, and a reform of its constitutional court. The availability of weapons in Ukraine poses a significant risk to the EU's internal security. For instance, after the wars in Yugoslavia, firearms circulated illegally for a long time afterwards and were regularly used for criminal purposes. This means that stricter border controls between the Schengen area and Ukraine will be required for both goods and migration for the foreseeable future. And even once the war's over, the EU will have to closely observe the demobilization of armed groups in Ukraine. So, if the politics aren't looking good, then what about the economy? Well, unfortunately, Ukraine is currently the poorest country in Europe. Now, the ongoing military conflict with Russia, which has been going on since 2014, clearly doesn't help the issue. But corruption has long also been a problem in the country. 
Despite being a very rich country on paper, due to its agricultural wealth and rich natural resources, the country has been marred in government corruption, with Transparency International ranking Ukraine as the third most corrupt country in Europe, behind just Russia and Azerbaijan. In recent years, there's also been a great deal of state intervention in the economy, including price controls and a smaller number of millionaire oligarchs monopolizing certain strategic sectors of the national economy, including the steel, energy and chemical industries, with these oligarchs often protected by the Ukrainian government. Unsurprisingly then, the EU sees Ukraine's chronic corruption as one of the biggest worries about accession. But Ukraine has responded by recently hiring an experienced investigator to head its specialized anti-corruption prosecutor's office. But for Ukraine to ever actually join the EU, there's no doubt that they'll have to break the oligarchal influence on their economy and in its place, develop a new free market economy. What about the third factor though? Taking on EU laws. Because to become an EU member, a candidate country needs to prove that it can meet all 35 chapters of the EU law. And in the longer term, each EU country would in theory need to join Schengen and adopt the euro. However, it is worth saying that there's no specific time limit for these measures, and they can be phased in later, if at all, once a country has become a member. Regardless, Ukraine would need to adopt tens of thousands of pages of legislation, and not only do these EU laws need to be passed, they also need to be implemented and then require extensive monitoring from the EU side. All of this during a war against Russia. So you might be thinking, what if Ukraine doesn't meet the EU's criteria, especially the administrative criteria? Well, they could undergo what's called the stabilization and association process, much like the Western Balkan nations are right now. The EU could also support the country financially, but both of these things are a bit difficult when there's a war going on. Now, once the war's over, Ukraine would be able to focus all of its efforts on reconstruction. And this relates to all sectors too, physical, economic, societal, and political. Which means that they already have a lot on their plate with this post-war reconstruction. And it'll be even harder to meet the Copenhagen criteria too. So what are the chances of Ukraine actually joining, and how long would it take? Well, it would depend on two factors. How long the war in Ukraine will last, and whether the EU could exert sufficient leverage on Ukraine to make the necessary reforms when they're rebuilding the country in the aftermath. Realistically then, considering the huge amount of work that Ukraine would need to do, we're probably looking at 15 to 20 years, according to many notable experts. So I certainly wouldn't hold your breath on the EU taking in Ukraine anytime soon, with other prospective countries much more likely to fill the 28th spot than Ukraine. Now, if you don't have the patience to wait 15 to 20 years, then you can get more from TLDR on Nebula right now. That's the streaming service that we built with our creator friends, and we can find a bunch of TLDR videos which will never make it to YouTube. You can also find a ton of our other videos there ad-free and get some of our videos early before anyone else. Signing up also really helps the channel and helps us make more content, not just for Nebula subscribers, but for everyone else too. So if you want more from us and support the channel, then you can get access to Nebula for less than $15 a year with the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Let me explain. We've partnered with the superb streaming service CuriosityStream, where you can find a bunch of great documentaries about all kinds of fascinating topics. Now, if you sign up to their service today using our link, then you'll get Nebula included absolutely free. That's both streaming services for less than a dollar a month. A crazy good deal to get all of these documentaries on CuriosityStream and more from TLDR on Nebula. If you're interested, then the link is in the description. And thanks so much for your support.